sometimes pets have accidents. Sometimes they leave a mess behind and the owners are embarrassed and the dogs are embarrassed. And then what do you do? So I was really excited when I found Allie Smith today and that she was going to be able to come on our show. And the reason I was excited is because she has trained over 1,200 dogs. So she used to be a pet setter and then she moved into being a pet trainer. And she's got one of the best dog blogs that is up and running right now. And so she's got a wealth of information for us. And she's the owner of a company called Rebarkable. Isn't that a cool name? I'm going to ask you guys, if you will, today to jump in with your pet mess questions. Because today we're streaming to the Ask a House Cleaner show. And we have a lot of professional house cleaners that are wondering, is it their job to clean up a pet mess when they get into a house? And then also we want to ask the homeowners if you have a question today, because we're also streaming to our Clutter Corner live show. And so if you are a homeowner and you have a pet and you might have pet accidents from time to time, this is the chance to get them answered because Allie is our expert. So please help me welcome Allie Smith to our show. Hi. How are you today? Good. Thank you very much for having me. I'm really like excited to get the opportunity to talk to your audience. Because I think, you know, we all love our animals and we all want the best for them. But you guys have a particularly unique placement in this situation. And it's going to be a really interesting one to dive into. Well, let's start with the situation of me going into my friend's house. And there we have this situation where there's obviously something that's happened. How do we deal with that first from I'm coming in, I'm from the outside, I don't live in the house, but I'm smelling mm -hmm. the dog poop. Mm -hmm. And there are lots of people that after a while, they don't smell the animals in their house. No. So how do we deal with that first? <laughs> so the first thing is, is making sure that the person you're going to see is willing to talk about it and happy to engage in that conversation, which is one of those awkward social situations that we're like, should I say anything? Don't I say anything? What do I do? But for me, I think sometimes if we address the elephant in the room, even if you go at the polite route of have you changed the air freshener or something, because, you know, there are some smells that we like and other people don't, but, you know, dog poop isn't usually one of them. And if they sort of do engage, that's when you can be like, okay, well, can I help you? Particularly like if they're less able, you know, they might be really grateful that you're willing to help them with this sort of thing. And as long as we're not offensive about it, it's usually okay. And then probably do exactly as you've done. Go for a little hunt through the house, which is probably the worst treasure hunt in the world. And if you don't find anything, that is probably when we do investigate, you know, the dogs. Because it does happen. You know, particularly like if your customers or the people that live in the home have longer hair. Like our dogs inevitably swallow longer hair, right? And then they can end up with a little little nugget just hanging off somewhere that they can't quite get to. Um, and particularly breeds like Dachshunds and Corgis that have the long body and sometimes Yorkshire Terriers, if they can't actually reach their backside, they can't sort that out by themselves. And that's when like, if they're bath friendly, if they're okay with a bath, great. If they're not, a wet wipe is absolutely fine. And if mum and dad aren't necessarily too precious about what their groom has done or like a particular cut or style, and they are hair-based, you can just snip it. You know, you're not going to snip a golden retriever, but something like a doodle, usually, you can do a little bit of a quick cut and just get rid of it, because that is probably the least stressful for all involved, because, you know, mm -hmm. I'm a big advocate of not stressing our dogs out, because also stressed dogs tend to make stressed dog parents. So, you know, <laughs> keeps everyone happy. But yeah, that would be how I would probably have approached that one. Well, I appreciate your insights because it was a sensitive conversation and I smelt it when I walked in. I wasn't going to be the first one to say anything. No. But when my friend said, oh, I should apologize for the smell. This is really bad. Okay. And she was the one to bring it up. And yeah. I said, what's going on here? You know, maybe let's take Talk a look at the dog and yeah. see if we could find it. Yeah. Mm. This has been really highly interesting. Thank you so much, Allie, no for problem. joining us today and for having this conversation. I want to thank all of you guys that joined us and have all of your comments here. If there's anything we missed, because we do have some here about anxiety and what happens with your dog, we will answer those questions for everybody that's watching the replay and also for those of you that joined us that we didn't get your questions answered. Thanks again for today. Until we meet again, oh my gosh, this is awesome. Leave the world a cleaner place than when you found it. Thanks very much for having me.